Hey guys, I wanted to come on here today and talk to you guys about relationships. Um, as many of you know, Step Onto My Mat Wellness or Some Wellness has five huge areas that we focus on for our Beyond the Plate approach to wellness and relationships is one of those five, as well as your nutrition, physical activity, career, and your spirituality. Uh, as per usual, I have my sheet of notes, so if you guys see me looking down, that is why I plan this ahead of time, and I have important things that I want to make sure I cover with you guys, so I take some notes to make sure I don't forget a single key thing that I want to mention today. So today we're talking about relationships. It's one of your primary foods. If you don't know what primary foods are, you can go to um, the website, via the link in my bio if you're on Instagram or my about section on Facebook and you can go to our website and go to the resources and freebies page and you can find anything and everything you need to know about primary foods there but your relationships are your primary foods and the beyond the plate approach there are other things such as your relationships your career your spirituality that are primary foods and what you're actually eating and what you're putting on your plate is secondary. That's the long and short of it. So today we're talking about when it comes to relationships, clear communication with your partners. Um, I'm sure you hear it all the time from the pros that communication is what a lot of people lack in their relationships. And this can be a romantic relationship. This can be a friendship relationship this can be um, a relationship with your children big or small this can be a relationship with your co-workers you get the idea communication is key in any relationship it's the cornerstone of every strong thriving relationship and while you may not always agree with your partner it's important to have that foundation of respect and communication in your relationship and so I wanted to touch on that aspect of respect I was watching something the other day and this lady was demanding respect from her friend and her friend was like respect is something that you earn and so I say that baseline like normal you should always demand respect like and I don't mean demand like you must respect me but for your own self-love and your own self-empowerment you should expect some level of respect from anybody that you know and don't know there's like this baseline level that of respect that every human should give everybody and you should expect nothing less than that from anybody that you come in contact with in your life whether it's a, a relationship a friendship or a stranger that you meet. There's that baseline level of respect. And a lot of that also comes from self-respect. If you respect yourself enough, you should demand that baseline level of respect from anybody. But then there is also respect that you earn and you can lose respect too. Like people can lose respect for you on that baseline level just from you not treating people with that baseline human respect. If you mistreat people on a normal basis they're not going to have that baseline level of respect for you because you don't have it for other people so you can lose respect that way but you can earn respect and i think the best way that you can earn respect from somebody is by modeling it so just like having that baseline level of human respect you can you can model respect for other people i don't know how else to explain that and a lot of that comes from just personal responsibility and just just being a good person and treating other people with respect and so when it comes to communication part of having open communication is being respectful like you have to be respectful of the person you're communicating with and that the way you can model that or do that or give that respect when it comes to communicating is to make eye contact be quiet when they're talking don't have any distractions 
And what I like to tell people, and I actually say this to people at work when I'm training people at work all the time, is to practice active listening. So really listen. Listen with the intent to listen. Don't listen with the intent to respond. Don't be sitting there acting like you're acting like you're listening to somebody, but formulating your response in your head. Like that's disrespectful because you're not really taking in what they're saying. You're just kind of putting up a defense and putting up a wall and ready to give your rebuttal. You are planning your rebuttal in your head. And if you're talking about, you know, trying to have an open line of communication with somebody, that's not communicating. That is getting your defenses up and ready with that rebuttal right away. Um, let's see. So part of having respectful, open communication with your partner is, this. I say this to people all the time, that relationships aren't 50-50, which we hear that a lot. They're 100-100. You have to give your 100 and your partner has to give their 100. And so, the same thing goes for respectful communication. You can't expect them to be anticipating your needs all the time and thinking about you and what you're struggling with. You also have to be concerned with what they're dealing with on a daily basis, what they're stressed out about, what their needs are. Like you gotta give your 100 and they gotta give their 100. So you have to keep that, that respect there and that open line of communication with them open like okay I understand those are your needs so please understand that these are my needs and you can start a conversation there um, when was the last time that you both shared your appreciation for each other uh, I make it a point all the time when Bob does something for me to let him know even if it's something small I know that that, you know, I know that you worked all night last night. I really appreciate you coming home and emptying the dishwasher and cleaning the kitchen. Because maybe I'll be off all day and I, ha I totally could have done it myself, but he did it and I let him know I appreciate it. It seems so menial, but, and really it is. In the whole scheme of things, a dishwasher is menial, but when you have so many other things going on, that goes a long way. Um, do you guys talk about or express with each other what you'd like to improve in your relationship? Or you just assume that they know? Because that's another point that I wrote. Um, please don't expect your partner to read your mind or your friend to read your mind or your mom or your kid to read your mind. Nobody's a mind reader. If you have to make your intentions and your wants and your desires blatantly clear, because people cannot read minds. And of course, there's a helicopter coming in. <laughs> I'm on my lunch break at work, by the way. So um, you have to express what you want. You have to make it clear. You can't expect somebody to read your mind. You can't say, well, we've been married 20 years. He should know that. Doesn't work that way. Um, what decisions do you two both agree on are decisions that you should make together? Do you guys know? And are you making them together? That's something they should have a conversation about. Let's see. Um, and are you making those decisions together? I don't know if I just said that or not, but are you making those decisions together? Creating a relationship, we all know, takes time and work. And these are just a few small things that I feel like are really big things that can get you started to having clear, respectful communications with each other. I want to make sure that I covered everything oh one last thing you cannot change your partner you cannot change them they cannot change you, you cannot change your friends so don't expect that and if you expect somebody to change based on what you want or how you want them to be your relationships heading for disaster sorry so I'm almost at my time limit for today. I had a whole other side of my sheet that I wanted to go over. Maybe I'll cover that another day. Thank you for listening, and I hope this helps. Y'all have a great day. I'm going ahead and doing a second video. I have a second side of a sheet of notes that goes along with um, a relationship talk that I did. I'll find a way to link that or make that available for you guys to find somehow. I will link these together somehow, I hope. But um, 
I really just wanted to go over this and I'm prefacing something from a book. It's from um, Osho's book. Osho is O-S-H-O. And it's from his book, Love, Freedom, and Aloneness. And in the preface, he, and I'm paraphrasing here, remember, he says basically that lust arises like from our our bodies. It's not like an internal unconscious or conscious thing. Lust is a bodily thing. And that love arises out of our consciousness. So that makes us think that love is a conscious decision to a point, and, and it is. Um, but unfortunately, people don't know their consciousness. So many people today aren't in tune with that. Um, and so the misunderstanding about love, since we're not in tune with our consciousness, kind of goes on and on and on. It's kind of a vicious cycle. And we mistake bodily lust for love. That's so profound to me. I don't know if it is to you, but it's so profound to me. So then it goes on, and again, I'm paraphrasing, that real love is sharing, not demanding. There is the joy of giving without expectation of return. How many times do we give in hopes, secretly hope, that our partner or our friend or our coworker or our boss gives something in return? Um, real love nourishes and strengthens your soul. And I always tell people that you know when you've met the one when they support you in becoming the best version of yourself. And I've seen so many people fall, quote unquote, in love with somebody and I just get that gut feeling like, ah, that person's not the one for you. And then years down the road after failed relationship and failed relationship, see them meet that person that really brings out the best qualities. It makes them become the best version of themselves. And then um, this kind of goes back to the joy of giving without expectation of return. But love never waits to be rewarded, recognized, or acknowledged because that's the ego. That's not love. Your ego wants to be rewarded. Your ego wants to be recognized. Your ego wants to be acknowledged. Not love. Love doesn't care. It's just love. And um, so if, if, if your partner that you're with right now is, uh, if you consider that a loving relationship, is it working? And if it is, um, use that as an example or like a baseline for all of your other relationships. But if the relationship that you're in with your partner right now isn't working, think of another relationship that you have that you feel is working. And what is working in that relationship that you can apply in your current relationship with your current partner to make that work? And then finally, if you feel like you don't have any loving relationships to use as an example, then that is the time that you need to learn to create a loving relationship with yourself.